outro cast. Hey, there he is. How you doing today? Peace, peace. How are you, man? Great. Are you dialing in from Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia? I am. I am. Someone's got to. Well, how is your day going, aside from having to answer the same questions over and over and over again from media? Not even, man. I, I'm, I'm doing well, man. I, um, I've been, I was up earlier, moving around a little bit, doing my morning stuff, and I took a nap because I just came, came back from L.A., uh, so I'm catching up to East Coast time, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do the writers that you have to speak with on this compared to the writers when you're putting out an album? Is it the same people? No, it's, it's totally different. Yeah, totally different. Yeah. Got um, it. And and uh, how long have has the book been done for? I know this is not your first book, but this is your first like major publisher book mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware. Yep. Um, I started writing this book well, I'm going to say it like this. This book is 20 years in the making. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started writing it two years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, we I just finished the audio version about mm -hmm. about a week ago. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's fresh off the press, man. It's the latest and the greatest. <laughs> Did you know what the five principles were before you sold the book? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I've, um, the five principles we've been in our movement, RBG Fit Club movement, we've been uh, sharing that model uh, of or that lifestyle, you know, in that form um, loosely, you know, for a while, over 11 years. But um, it, it was like not something I don't think that we pushed to the forefront in the way that we do in, in this book. Um, <clears throat> and also writing the book, and fleshing them out and, and how I arrived at the principles and the, the, the scope and the depth of that, you know, is something that we had, we had, we hadn't even had a vehicle within our brand to do it. You know what I'm saying? Even mm -hmm. musically and, and so forth, you can't really contain the scope. So the book was the, the right format. Yeah. When some people write a book, they actually are sitting at the computer and typing away. And then other people, they're just talking it into a recorder and transcribing it. Did you actually sit at the computer or were you more talking it in uh, and transcribing? I, I'll tell you a fun fact about the, my process. Mm -hmm. The book is 336 pages. Mm -hmm. And I wrote every bit of it on my phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just... Just like I write rhymes, on my, yeah, yeah, just on my phone. Like I tried to uh, uh, sit down with um, in a computer space, and I was like, I'm not, nah, that ain't gonna work. I, I gotta move. I like to be mobile, and when I get inspired, or mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to be able to just capture it in that conversational, natural way. So, and I also I um, actually wrote the book. What would it be? One and a half times. So uh, we started out, I didn't intend to write the book. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I had talked to my team and we were going to uh, get, uh, I won't mention his name, but we, there was a writer that I, I really enjoy his writing and who he is. And we, we worked on the book together um, for a little while and it didn't work out um, mm -hmm. voice wise and, and just like timing wise, it was just like, time going by and it just wasn't working and I was like ah man so now I gotta write this book you know what I'm saying yes and so then after that like I wrote half from the book and then I and I was like the voice that I'm writing it in is not it's not it's not my voice it's like that intellectual voice in your head and blah 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 and I was like nah that's not what am I doing and so I had to scrap it and what I, uh, what I can't, what I realized was I found my voice, my true, my native tongue, you know, mm -hmm. the balance of, you know, Ebonics and, and nerding out on deep philosophical dives and Brooklyn street slang, all kind of shit. You know, I wanted to keep it in my, my conversational voice. So that is what got pressed, got pressed up, you know, for, to be shared. So, yeah. 
It does sound like you. That's a really good point because people know your voice and they know how you speak. So the book has to sound like you. So it's a great thing that ultimately it's you, not a ghostwriter. But, you know, as somebody who's toured the world that's been on TV, is this just like the springboard, the beginning of it for you? Like, hey, are you transitioning to keynote speeches and all that? Um, you know, I have been re I've a lot. I've been through a lot of changes this year, hmm. um, outside of this book, and um, I've been re reevaluating purpose and the best way I can serve, and so um, I think the way I do whatever I do is 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 my own. It's going to be different. It's going to be uh, in some way. I'm trying to improve and bring some magic to it, right? So I think um, motivation uh, can be in, a, in, you know, you can stand on a podium and try to motivate people. But mm -hmm. I, I think I try to do motivational living, you know? And um, so whether um, whatever I'm doing is it, designed to try to inspire. So we're working on, for example, uh, our book release um, promotion and things like that. I want to do interactive things with the five principles. And so mm -hmm. sometimes that's speaking and having conversation. And sometimes that's running and, and moving, move, literally moving the crowd, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and inviting artists and, and participating, fit hop in different ways. And so, you know, I think um, keynote speaking is probably like in the toolbox, but it's one of many ways that I want to like, uh, honor this calling to share the five P's. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, so when I look at where you are now in your career, Dead Prez, legendary group, the solo career, that's happening. Author, you've done some acting stuff as well. Being this diversified, was that the plan all along for you or just a happy accident? Um, well, You know, divert. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you know, freedom. You just want to. You just want to be free to create. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, uh, express yourself. And and again, like as even what I learned from martial arts training. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't we don't just use one technique. You know, you have to be flexible and fluid and adapt. So you know, what I mean, MCing is communicating, right? And um, so it's like. You, you know, you can do that through a lot of different ways. Um, <clears throat> so I think I'm just opening up what MCing looks like, um, whether it's visually, you know, I've done some film works uh, recently with uh, yeah. Lulu. And, um, you know, I want to bring Fit Hop to um, the multimedia universe. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, when you have an album called Workout 2, I think that, yeah, the Fit Hop is totally on brand. So altogether, there's a positivity element, yet awareness and, and political awareness. It's really, you're, you're kind of doing the thinking man's hip hop and the thinking man's book. <laughs> so kudos to you for keeping it at a high level all these years later. A lot of the people in your field kind of dumb it down because they go, what do the majority of people want to hear? in their music and seeing their books not you it's it's a lot of pressure to be smart huh i you know i i received that if, if that's a compliment but <laughs> it, I, it is a compliment because i i say that a lot of people look to entertainment and they're reading to kind of tune out and mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying right there they go yeah. this weekend i'm gonna unwind but you're keeping the intellect high even if okay. it sounds great yeah, man. I think it's yeah. It's like you know, in the grocery store, there's there's the you know the produce section. That's the vitamins, and you know, yeah. and then the junk food aisle, and the there's the veggies, there's the meats. There's a little bit of some water if you want water. You can get some soda, some wine. You know, it's 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 a it's a full um, smorgasbord, man. So I think what I do is I try to do what I'm passionate about and what I'm inspired to do, as opposed to like. What do I think is gonna work? Like that, all that shit feel cheesy and gimmicky to me. Like, yeah. um, it's like, but if I feel passionate 
about um, running, for example. Um, and I can uh, make authentic music for running. You know, if I feel passionate about uh, what I learned in Wushu Kwan Kung Fu or whatever, mm-hmm. to me, the joy, the, the, the service, and the adventure is how do you create that song? Yeah. You know, that is, that's going, that's going to do what other artists might feel intimidated to write that, or they might feel like, I don't, I can't write a song about running down the street and make it interesting, you know? So for me, that's like a personal challenge. It's like, they, they say, uh, do what only you can do in a, in the way you would do it. And then there you have your, your place and your purpose. So, um, you know, I, I look at it kind of like that, like, um, not so much, like trying to be smart or or like a highbrow kind of thing, you know. I'm a I'm a student, you know what I'm saying. So the music, the songs I write, I I kind of look at it like um, what Hallmark does for sentiments, you know. That you know, it's like somebody needs to say certain things that put it in words for you, and then you can that creates uh, community, right? When you mm-hmm. give cards. So for me, I feel like the hallmark of this holistic shit, you know, how, how do we make those kind of songs where you like, yo, when I want to keep going to the gym, but I fell off, right? I got, I could put on back on my regimen and it reminds me and it affirms me and it, and it, and it focuses my, my tunnel vision on what my goals are. So I feel like it has a functional place within the overall hip hop world too. Hmm. Well, down to the last two questions before I let you go. The uh, first right. one, early into your career, you were part of that Loud Rocks compilation where they were pairing together great hip hop artists with great rock artists. You worked with Static X, cool track. Were you in the studio at all with Static X or is that pieced together? That was pieced together. That was uh, uh, digital like files and we shared it back and forth and then he, he put it together. Um, but it's funny you bring up loud. We're right now rehearsing for a BET Hip Hop Awards this year for a tribute to uh, that era and uh, ourselves and some other groups, Wu Tang, of course, and, mm-hmm. uh, Remy Ma, then groups that came out of the loud experience. So we still we still doing it, and, uh, you know, still doing it. That compilation meant a lot to me because it reminded me of the Judgment Night soundtrack, which is one of my favorite albums of all time. It was kind of like a modern copy of it, but in a good way. Was that a good memory for you being part of the Loud Rocks or it was done and you moved on? Well, I mean, the thing about being on Loud that I, that I do appreciate is the where we were coming from with our music and, and the community we was coming from and just uh that element you know when that fused with what Lau was you know Lau was this like this white guy Steve Rifkin yeah who a hip-hop lover who you know was into everything skateboarding and you know that kind of culture but he loved real fucking hip-hop right yeah. and so few that that brought the rock that brought all kinds of cultures that he was from with shit that we was from, you know what I mean? So I think, I think um, we take it for, it's a, it's a, it's a duh now, but at that time, you know what I mean? That he, that was paving a a way for, you know, the, the white kids in Russia and whoever else to fuck with some dead president shit, you know? And um, so I think, um, yeah, that's, that, that has been, helped us have a audience and a voice uh, across what you might expect in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense to me. And the last question I got, when you finish a big thing, like a book, half the people go, Oh, I'm going to write another one of these. And half the people go, I don't know about this. (laughs) Do you (laughs) hope to write another book in the near future? Number four. Yeah. I got the bug, man. Right. Writing it was very, very, uh, uh, satisfying mm-hmm. and challenging. You know what I mean? It was definitely challenging. Um, but I, yeah, I think that um, that medium, especially audio book, um, is, is I have a, a, a space 
uh, that I'm going in that direction. And I feel like with my background in, in music and audio yeah. that sense, <clears throat> the, we, that we can innovate in the audio book space in a way where we can bring you through sound effects and music and, and you know, just the art of, of telling our stories. I, I feel like we can innovate in that space in a way. So I'm kind of excited to do more and, uh, and I'm, I'm working on some conversations with Audible and, uh, you know, to, to but, you know, you got to write something if you're going to put it in that format. So yeah. that's gonna, that makes me have to write something. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. More, more books. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that next content. I'm looking forward to the live performances of Dead Prez. You saw whatever it is. Looking forward to it in the near future. And I appreciate your time. All right, man. Thank you so much. Outro cast.